God, we praise you. We praise you for you are a faithful God. And you open our hearts that we might hear you in your faithfulness, inviting us to claim our true names. As we hear your voice, as we receive your spirit, we rise up in faith. We rise up renewed. We rise up with true pride. We praise you and we thank you, our faithful God. Amen. Happy Pride. We are so excited about this season of Pride Tide and our new theme, God Knows Your Name. For the next few weeks, we will be seeking to comprehend the power of that phrase. God knows your name. Many of us throughout our lives have been called names, some of which we cannot repeat publicly. And it's easy for those names to get into our psyche. It's easy for us to hear those names, for those names to keep coming back. The invitation is for us to know our true name our name spoken by love and by God. Our new theme is inspired by the wonderful song by Tasha Cobb that we sang as part of our threshold movement, movement today and that was offered by Moving Spirit. The invitation during this season is for us to find our sense of worth through God's love for us. Celebrate pride. Pride is not found in externals, such as achievement or designer labels. Pride is found in going to our center and finding there our sacred worth. Our theme scripture from 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10, offers resounding clarity in defining us. You are a chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are singers of praises to the one who called you out of fear. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. In that theme scripture, we receive some of our names. We are chosen. We are royal. And some in our community do a wonderful job of showing their royalty. Some would say that we are a fabulous priesthood. Once we were not a people, once we were pushed out of churches, now we have an altar, a place, a true home. We are the royal, chosen, fabulous people of God. Through Pride Season, we will open ourselves to the joy we experience when God calls our name. We will discover the ways that God goes with us, moves with us, and tells us that we are God's own. When God speaks our name, we find comfort, counsel, and eternal friendship. When we become quiet to experience our name spoken through our heart, by the Holy Spirit, we will be renewed and made new. When God calls our name, we receive the direction that we need at that moment. When God calls our name, we find our purpose. When God calls our name, we live with confidence and resolve and hope. During this season, we'll be looking at some of the names that God calls us, names of empowerment and names of joy. To celebrate pride is to rise as LGBTQ plus peoples and offer counter voices to the voices of injustice, division, and oppression. And our rising thrives as we are released from fear into the wonders of divine love. One of the wonders of divine love is that God, the creator of the universe and all the galaxies, is a God who personally 
speaks to each one of us and reaches out directly to our spirits. Today we'll look more closely at one of the names that God calls us to, wholeness. Our name is wholeness. How did Jesus live with wholeness? How did Jesus embrace his name, which was also wholeness? Today's gospel from Mark 3, 20 through 25, offers some insights. We look at the life of Jesus, we see that Jesus had a very clear purpose. We looked at that in the previous series, Bring Heaven to Earth. Jesus came to bring beloved community. And yet there were forces that tried to pull Jesus away from his divine and holy purpose to bring heaven to earth. Some of the voices that sought to pull him away, as we see in today's scripture, was family and also some of the oppressive religious voices. His family was well-intentioned, but we see in our scripture today that they thought he had lost his mind. They named him Delusional. Jesus could have given in to the name that he was called by his family. There were some oppressive religious authorities also during that time, and in fact a delegation of religious legal experts were so concerned about Jesus, they traveled 100 miles to accuse him of demon possession. They named Jesus Possessed. These voices, like the voices we hear today, were quite strong. His family called him delusional. Some of the religious authorities called him possessed. But Jesus leaned into the deeper and truer voice, the deeper and truer voice from his heart. And from that place, Jesus was able to move with clarity and focus of heart. Jesus stayed focused on his purpose to bring heaven to earth because his heart was aligned with God. Jesus was centered in deep wholeness. Jesus knew God and knew himself and listened deeply as God called his name. You are my beloved. You are wholeness. And with wholeness, you will help to bring heaven to earth. Being called such strong names, it'd be easy to see how Jesus could easily give in to the pull of bitter anger. There is a place for anger when it comes to injustice, and it's easy for us to be consumed by anger. Jesus shows us how to be angry in a way that is whole, how to be angry in a way that care fronts and confronts the powers that be, and still live from a place of wholeness. Jesus tells the legal experts, the religious experts, a story that makes a simple point. He's been casting out demons, thus he is not possessed by them. And in response to the family drama, Jesus expands the definition of family, saying, who is my mother? Who are my siblings? Whoever does God's will are my siblings and my mother. All who work to bring heaven to earth, all who work for wholeness, all who work for beloved community are part of this family that works to bring heaven to earth. So what stands in the way of us living with wholeness? Part of the challenge we face is not giving in to the false names that we are called. As we see, Jesus was called some false names and he resisted them. We can think of some of the false names we've been called throughout our life and we could create a very long list. But one of the names that's real prevalent is not good enough. Some of us from the earliest age have been told we're not good enough. Oppressive religion, fear-based religion, oftentimes says we're not good enough and that somehow our salvation is based on all that we can do or achieve in the realm of our faith communities. We are good enough. We are called beloved. We are called whole. 
It is so easy to keep getting pulled back into that sense of unworthiness. There is the peer pressure. There's the idea of comparing ourselves to others. Jesus also faced that in his own life as he was compared to previous prophets and teachers. Even Jesus' own disciples tried to pull him away from God's purpose for him. They tried to convince him to take the easier path and the easier way, to not take the journey to Jerusalem. Jesus continued to lean into his purpose, to bring heaven to earth, to help those around him to discover their true names. Our broken world pulls us against wholeness. Our world says we will not be whole until we buy this product or drive this car. Materialism, racial divides, class divides, economic divides, they pull at our wholeness. The pull of the 24-hour news cycle, the addictive use of technology, push notifications. It's easy for many of us to become iPhone-aholics or Android-aholics. The technology around us can help us to be very effective. It can support much of what we seek to do, but it can so easily become a little G God. The invitation is for us to take moments where we again return to that quiet place to hear the true voice of love that reminds us that we are good enough. We are God's own. We are beloved. What supports wholeness? Embracing our true names. The invitation is to patter our own lives after the life of Jesus, to go through the Gospels with a focus on the character of Jesus. Go through and look at the stories of Jesus, not only in the Sermon on the Mount, but in other places, the miracle stories throughout the Gospels, and see the way that Jesus reacts to the circumstances that almost pull him in various directions. Ask yourself as you look at the life of Jesus and read his stories, ask yourself, what's he thinking now? What's he feeling now? Then invite God to help you to pattern your life in such powerful character. Philippians 2.5 says, Let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Learning to live with the mind of Christ, the mind of wholeness. As Jesus faced family pressure and faced pressure from some of the religious voices, I wonder if the whole time he was praying under his breath, I am whole. I have what I need. I am strong. My purpose is true. The writings of Paul reflect Paul's attempt to pattern himself after the life of Jesus. So we can learn a lot there. In today's scripture from 2 Corinthians Paul says, as grace increases to benefit more and more people, it will cause gratitude to increase, which results in God's glory. So we are not depressed. Even if our bodies are breaking down on the outside, the person that we are on the inside is being renewed every day. Our name is grateful. Our name is renewal. We ground ourselves in hope, every day moving closer and closer into the wholeness that God invites us to. The journey to wholeness is not an easy journey. It's very important to be compassionate with ourselves. Remember, our name is wholeness, not perfection. Renee Brown, in her book, The Gifts of Imperfection, says wholehearted living is about engaging in our lives from a place of worthiness. It means cultivating the courage, compassion, and connection to wake up in the morning and think, no matter what gets done and how much is left undone, I am enough. It's going to bed at night thinking, yes, I am imperfect and vulnerable 
and sometimes afraid. But that doesn't change the truth that I am also brave. I am also worthy of love. And I am worthy of belonging. We are brave. We are worthy. Our name is wholeness. The wholeness of Jesus becomes our wholeness. Yes, indeed, during this pride season and beyond, we are a people. We each have a name that God knows. And therein, we live with freedom. We live with pride. We live with wholeness. Amen and amen.